If you're watching this video, you may have been told you or your child has an abnormality on chromosome 8. It can be very overwhelming to receive this information and not know where to turn or how to process it. In this video, we will explain what a chromosomal abnormality is, the kind of changes that can affect chromosome 8, and see some pictures of some of the amazing people who have a disorder of chromosome 8. Finally, we'll tell you about some resources where you can find more information or connect with other chromosome 8 families. Please be aware that this video has not been produced by medical professionals and is intended only for informational purposes. You should always consult your doctors for more information. Chromosomal disorders can be very complicated and some people have more than one. We will try and show some simplified examples, but first let's brush up on what a chromosome is. Within each cell of our bodies, we have a blueprint, a set of instructions that tells our bodies how to operate, and within those instructions are chromosomes. Those chromosomes are numbered from largest to smallest, with number one being the largest. In general, most people have 23 pairs for a total of 46 chromosomes. We're going to focus on no chromosome number eight and on differences that can affect it. Sometimes these chromosomes get cut and pasted back together in a different order than how they look in most people. Sometimes these changes don't seem to have any effect, and other times they do. Here are a few examples of differences that can affect chromosome 8. If you look to the upper left corner, that is an example of a deletion. The yellow part represents genetic material that has been cut out of the chromosome and lost. If you look at the middle, that is an example of a duplication. The yellow part of the genetic material has been copied and put back into the chromosome, so there is twice as much material as is typical. The picture on the right shows an inversion. This means the genetic material was cut, flipped upside down, and reinserted. There are other changes that can occur to chromosomes, such as translocations, in which genetic material is cut from one chromosome and reinserted into another. Sometimes, in cases like these, genetic material can be affected at the spots where the chromosomes were disrupted. Some other chromosomal abnormalities include trisomy, in which an extra copy of the entire or part of the chromosome is present. A ring formation occurs when the two ends of the chromosome stick together. There's often some genetic material lost at the two ends of the chromosome before it sticks together. Mosaicism is another term you may hear. People with mosaicism have a mix of cells that are typical or normal and cells that are not typical. For instance, a person with mosaicism of deletion 8P has some cells that have a typical chromosome 8 and some cells that have abnormal copies of 8. Usually, the greater number of abnormal cells they have, the more impaired they will be. Recombinant 8 occurs when there is a deletion on part of the short arm and a duplication on part of the long arm. Chromosomes are divided into two halves called arms. The shorter arm is called P and the longer arm is called Q. You may hear about a chromosome disorder that has the number 8 followed by the letter P or Q. The 8 refers to chromosome 8. The P or Q tells you which arm has the abnormality, the short P arm or the Q arm. The P or Q may be followed by a string of numbers. The numbers correlate to genetic material on the chromosome and tell doctors at which point the genetic material has been disrupted. So if you hear of duplication 8Q, that means there is a duplication, an extra copy of gen genetic material, on the long arm Q of chromosome 8. If you hear about a condition called 8P23 deletion, that means on chromosome 8, the short arm P is missing part of the chromosome at the section called 23. You may hear something like, deletion duplication 8P, which means there's more than one abnormality on the chromosome, both a deletion and a duplication. Sometimes the condition is inherited from the parents, who also share the abnormality. Or sometimes it happens by chance and it's not inherited. This is called de novo. Chromosome abnormalities are a natural occurrence. Sometimes they just happen. So what does it mean if you or someone you love has an abnormality on chromosome 8? Well, that depends on a lot of things. It can depend on which genetic material has been altered and how much. Some people are significantly impacted, 
Some people are moderately or slightly impacted, and some people do not seem to be significantly affected. There are individuals with differences on chromosome 8 who have led very typical lives and only discover they have a genetic abnormality when they have a child who has the same, but whose developmental abilities have been affected. Some people's ability to communicate or their mobility is affected. Some people gain these abilities and some don't. Some people have a lot of medical problems and may require surgeries or special medications and some don't. Some people may have facial differences or be intellectually disabled. Some people do not even know they have an abnormality until it's diagnosed when they're an adult. If you've seen a geneticist, they've probably directed you to the website for an organization called Unique. The information they have can be very valuable, but it can sometimes be hard to read. Remember that the information available is not all-encompassing and not representative of all cases, so it may not describe the outlook for your loved one. Most rare conditions have not had many studies done on them and the sample sizes are small. Thus, the information available may not be accurate simply because doctors didn't have a lot of patients to work with. No one can really tell you how a person will develop in the future. There's a wide range. There are many types of developmental therapies you can try to help children gain new skills. And if you haven't heard about these, ask your doctor. Many people receive therapies such as speech therapy, occupational therapy to learn fine motor skills, and physical therapy to build strength and work on gross motor skills. Additionally, there are many other types of therapies and interventions you can try to help people with chromosome 8 reach their full potential. Doctors recommend starting interventions as young as possible, so be sure to look into it. Regardless of genetic differences, everyone is still an individual who has unique gifts and abilities. If your child or someone you love has been diagnosed with a chromosomal abnormality, remember that it's just a name, just a label. They are still the same special person they were before, now you just have a name to call the condition. Although disorders of chromosome 8 are rare conditions, the families of chromosome8.org would like you to know you're not alone. There are multiple blogs you can follow and a couple of books written by parents of kids with chromosome 8 conditions. There are several Facebook pages where you can meet other families and you can look at the profiles on chromosome8.org to see how many other people affected are functioning. You can also play a vital role in the future of treatments and therapies by joining research studies focused on disorders of chromosome 8 as are listed on our website at chromosome8.org. The important thing to know is that a diagnosis is not the end of the world. Many people with differences on chromosome 8 live full, happy lives. They have friends, they go to school, they travel and experience new things. They love their families and they live good lives. This journey is difficult, especially if you have just received a diagnosis. It takes some time to get accustomed to it. Remember that you're not alone. Reach out for support from other special needs families and come join our family support networks at chromosome8.org and on Facebook. Remember, we're here for you.